Hey guys, welcome back to Lehigh River Subdivision. I'm Ian and today we're doing layout update number 21. It's been a month since I did a layout update. I've been extremely busy with work, family things, and just life in general. So with that being said, uh, I haven't had too much time to work on the layout, but I've made some progress, uh, came up with some plans, and we're going to go over those. Um, I accepted Jerry Satterelli's challenge that he posted the other night. Um, it's to clean up and organize your layout and your working areas. So we're going to take a look at that and that'll give us a chance to tour the entire layout. And um, then we'll jump into the changes that I've made. And that will be it for me talking and we'll get into it. Oh, one last thing. So I lied. Um, the contest. I hope to have that video recorded and done by the end of this week. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, just things happened and pushed back my schedule and I haven't had a chance to do that. Um, I got everyone written down, but we have to set up the way for Cameron to pick the winner. So that will be coming. So look out for that. And uh, let's get into this layout update. Okay, jumping right into Jerry's challenge. Um, one of the changes that I made kind of helped with this challenge. So we're on the far left of the layout. Um, as you can see up in the top right corner where those Lionel cars are sitting. This is where the layout comes back out from underneath and starts its trip all the way around the loop again. Uh, I set up my waste craft table down here. And I'm going to get another one so I can put two along that wall. Um, one for hers and one for my crafts. And I ordered the cutting mat there. Um, I'm going to take you over there so we can take a better look. Um, but this will be my workstation. Um, I want to get into scratch building and doing um, kits um, as well. And the reason for that you will see later in this video because it has to do with one of my plans for one of my areas. So let's go take a closer look at this table. Okay, so I'm over at the table I set up quick and you can see it's a rather large working area. Brought some of the tools from the layout over here that would be used for scratch building maybe. <clears throat> There's the contest prizes, they're still here, I didn't get rid of them. Um, this is something I picked up a while ago and haven't shown. I'd like to get into airbrushing and custom painting. Uh, this is a sh Atlas C628 shell um, for an Alco and uh, I had plans for that but that's another video. Um, this is the cutting mat I ended up going with. It's an Adir uh, office cutting mat and it's an 18 by 24 and uh, there's some of the angles if you're interested. Um, it seems like a really nice mat and then it's double sided as well so it's got the green and the black on it. Um, some of the other things I got out my Tomex substation maybe I'll start playing with that. Um, my Nana's friend Tom gave me this box of N-scale buildings um, so I have all those now to play with. Uh, if he's like he said I could use them maybe to scratch build maybe I can kit bash with them but he gave them to me and that was awesome so if you watch this Tom uh, thank you for that and uh, a box I'm gonna ship out to get two decoders installed in locomotives and the box down there is uh, mail call but that's another video so that is the work area I set up. So we can come right up to the layout here. Uh, so that's one of Cameron's O-scale box cars. And these are two um, old metal Lionel cars that my mother-in-law gave to me. Uh, eventually they'll be on a shelf down here just for display. Uh, they were up in the living room on the shelf, but we moved them down here because Cameron can get into things now. So they're down here. So moving along the layout, you can see I've started to clean off everything. So the only thing laying there is my square yet. And then we come past the viaduct. 
As we come past the viaduct, all this area has now been cleaned out and cleaned up. Coming into the grade to the yard, pretty much everything's cleaned up out of there. Uh, this curve I pulled out. This is, as you know, if you follow along, the yard's not set in stone yet on this end. But I did have a curve that came out here just as a feeder track, just to do something with it for now. But I'll show you what I was using that for. So we come around the yard. That's all clear. Usually was. Um, all the locomotives and rolling stock that aren't on the layout are all neatly set in there. My ESU controller and all my extra switches. There's my ore cars. Um, you can see I set a track up here. And I'll explain that later. So I've straightened up pretty much everything. So we come down through. Here's the Lehigh Gorge. This whole area is cleaned out other than the stone that's laying down in there. And this side is completely cleaned out. This was all stacked high from from that point there all the way down in here so there is my answer to Jerry Sat's challenge uh, I feel much happier with the layout being organized like that so let's get into the changes so I'm working on mocking up the roads and how I'm doing that is I took black construction paper I set two of my train works trailers on there and got them about uh, the width they would be to make the road and I cut a bunch of pieces and I'm just kind of laying them out because I want to know where the road's going to be because I want to contour the scenery around some things so that is what I'm working on in this section right now so I'm back here over at Whitehaven and I showed you how I mocked up the roads now, in Whitehaven, there's a building that sits right on this corner, the railroad crossing. And then there's a smaller house. Uh, I was looking at Google Maps. But I just use these two buildings to kind of get an idea. Um, and then there'll be some houses here. And then there's a little shopping mall here. And there's a UP caboose in Whitehaven that actually sits in this place. Um, so I want to try to figure how I can get those items in. The next thing is... There was a Lehigh Valley engine building or engine house um, in Whitehaven, Pennsylvania, and they converted it to a library. So I'm going to try to scratch build that. Um, I'll throw the picture up, um, but that is going to end up going in here. And I figured if I do a couple buildings as close as I can to. Whitehaven it'll start to give this the feel of it being Whitehaven and Whitehaven is the town that's located at the top of the Lehigh Gorge so it fits perfectly in this little spot um, what I went ahead and did was all this foam was loose in here so I went through and I started getting these glued in place um, I still have to figure out some terrain in here um, this is just the piece I cut out of here because I need the plywood height to match this height and uh, That's where I'm at and then the one thing I had to figure out was you see this little piece of plexiglass there I put that in to hold uh, scenery sculpt the mold or whatever I put in here then so it doesn't fall down I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of faintly make out the double track underneath there and that's where the layout cuts back to the other side to give the continuous run but look like a point to point. So that is the update on Whitehaven. And um, I would expect to see some progress in this area uh, moving forward. Not fast, but slow. There will be work done in Whitehaven. Okay, probably the scene that a lot of people would like to see some progress on. And if you've been paying attention during this layout update, you've already seen that there were some changes to Lanesboro, Pennsylvania, which lies underneath the Staruka Viaduct. So the Staruka Viaduct was an Erie Railroad bridge um, that was double-tracked uh, during the Erie and Erie-Lackawanna time. 
and then later single tracked and still used today by the New York Susquehanna Western or just the Susquehanna as some people refer to it as. So that is the tracks across the top. Now if you look in the bottom left corner, I started laying in this track. The D&H, which I got a D&H engine down there, ran underneath the Staruka on the left, well, I'm doing it on the left hand side on my rendition. So I've started laying in the town. So to get my idea, I've used lots of historical photos, photos that are current that I could find, and once again, Google Maps, which Google Maps is a great reference if you're trying to recreate a prototype scene or freelance and add prototype detail. So I noticed when I looked at Google Maps, there was a road on the right-hand side. It really should go in here in this span, but I can't do it with the grade. So I moved it out to this span. So the road will come in from the back there. This is just mocked up. And it comes down, there's a bridge that goes across. Well, I'm going to buff this out, I think, 7 inches so I can create the scene in the front so it's not scrunched. Um, there will be a road bridge across the creek here, which you can see the creek bed is now in place. So the creek will flow through this arch, which would be realistic. The road goes through one arch, and then the rivers and the next arch to the road. So the road comes down. This is the main road that tees off here because there's a T intersection. The road comes down this way, and this these thinner black strips because I didn't have brown, they're the dirt road. So this is a dirt road that goes back underneath this band. It runs straight down along the back of the bridge. Well, the real bridge is twice the length of mine. So I should have an eight foot viaduct to recreate this scene in true prototypical scale. I only have half. So this road runs behind these arches. In real life, it runs past more arches, but it, this is the dirt road, comes off the main road, goes back. There's a few houses behind the bridge, if you're looking at it this way. And then there's a few houses out here along the main road. So I just have these set here for an idea. So you can see how Staruka will start to lay in. Now for this track, you can see I cut the hole in the back of the foam. I'm going to put a small loop here that just loops around. So I can run trains down here. Just to give it that neat feel because I've come to the conclusion my layout it goes point to point but this is the one scene that doesn't fit the rest of the layout that's why I say it's freelance with prototypical things because this scene will be all prototypical but most of my layout is based off of uh, the Lehigh Valley and CNJ lines going up to Lehigh Gorge to Scranton wilkes Bear. so that's a little insight um, but I'm happy with the way this is looking, and you will be seeing a lot more progress in Staruka. I didn't mean to talk so much on this, but I wanted to give a good explanation of my planning and where I'm going. And you can see I got the truck and trailer down there. So you can see that my papers are a little wider than what the road's going to be, but it's a good way to give yourself an indication. And then you step back, you can actually start to visualize uh, just based off of that. So we'll talk more about this loop in a future video, but I do have good ideas and plans for that. And you won't even notice that hole back there once the scenery is done in this scene. All right, I'm going to move on to the last spot. Just a real quick update on the river gorge. You can see I've gotten the drywall mud for the concrete cap all the way out to the end there. Um, I still have to put about two or three more layers on to get it more smooth like it is over there. So, just, I haven't done too much in here. I gotta get that done and then I can progress in this scene more. Um, kind of been jumping around. Um, sometimes it's good to just take a step back because I've been working on this scene for a good bit. And uh, I needed a break from this location. And uh, I got two other scenes going so I can go back and forth and uh, that should keep me pretty well motivated 
So you can just see uh, how that's starting to look over there. Um, it does look much better, but still needs a little bit of work to get the concrete cap to how I want it. Okay, one last location to take a look at. Um, I had this double or um, crossover switch here to come off the main and go into the yard. I took some of the extra track pieces I have laying and laid out this stretch of track that comes out here. That's just so I can run DC engines when I get them if they're not decoder and test them. Um, two more things. Um, you've seen this SD60E in the mail call a while back. It was a sound ready unit. Well, I sent this out along with my Kato Mikado. Say that 10 times fast. Anyway, um, I got the ESU decoder put into this and it's now sound and DCC equipped. And then the Mikado was having electrical pickup issues um, for a while and it didn't run anymore and it sat for a long time. So I sent that out to the gentleman as well. And he put a, I believe a Digitrax decoder in it. Um, I can throw a picture in here that he sent of the decoder in it. And then he fixed all the electrical pickup issues. And I'm glad I sent that out because that thing's working beautifully now. Um, this video is running really long, so I'm not going to have any train running in this. But I will post the video later this week uh, showing both these locomotives um, working and running. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. And if you made it this far into the video, you should get an award, but I don't have anything to give you. So sorry about that. Um, I just want to say thanks again, everybody. I appreciate it. And um, we'll see you down the tracks.